Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father and Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we're going to be looking at our psalm for the day, Psalm 118. So if you have your Bible with you, now we're going to be referencing some sections we didn't read earlier. So if you've got a Bible with you, your Bible app with you, we invite you to open it up or turn it on to Psalm 118 that you can follow along as we look through this text. And we're going to finish with it. It all comes together in our theme verse for today. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it from verse 24. Now, if you've played chess or checkers, uh, both games are the same, at least in how they start, don't they? Uh, you got all of your pieces lined up in a row right in front of you, ready for that offensive attack. And while the gameplay is going to be different between both games, you still have that same objective, to obliterate your opponent and to ultimately win the game by taking their pieces. And if your gameplay is anything like mine, you find yourself at the end completely outmaneuvered and left hanging on for dear life. You'll have two pieces left while your enemy, your, your opponent, is completely surrounding you with no possible move left. All hope seems to be lost. And if you put Psalm 118 on a checkered board, that's what you would find, at least you think you would find. See, we don't know who wrote Psalm 118, but we do have a glimpse of what is going on in the background of this psalm. We see it in verses 10 through 12 of our psalm. It reads, All nations surrounded me. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me, surrounded me on every side. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me like bees. They went out like fire among thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. See, Psalm 118 is really a psalm of thanksgiving. It's one of victory, of deliverance, of celebration, because the, the writer, the, the speaker, whoever it is, was surrounded with no hope and yet saw a magnitude of, of danger around them and yet found victory. And as we read through that, they surrounded me like bees. We're not talking about a, a beekeeper who's harvesting honey and has a protective suit on. We're talking about bees like the, the murder hornets that were coming and attacking and everyone was so afraid of. In a hopeless situation, we still hear the refrain, I cut them off, or in the name of the Lord, I cut them off. There's an unexpected victory to be found. We don't know who wrote the psalm, but we know the context. See, this psalm was one that was always read during the Passover festival throughout the Old Testament, which means it was also a psalm that was read by Jesus on his Passover. And it brings to light memories of the Exodus when Israel was escaping from Egypt and they're surrounded at this time. You remember they've got the Red Sea in front of them and it seems like there's no way to get through. And they're surrounded by Pharaoh's army behind them and everywhere around them there is no move. There is no possible escape. Hope is lost. But we know that story and we know who was at work in that story. The psalmist makes it abundantly clear to us. In our text this morning, we read 11 verses from Psalm 118, and 11 different times we hear the name of the Lord. We read Yahweh. He is the one at work, as we heard in verse 15 and 16. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord exalts. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. See, God is at work whenever Israel is surrounded. And on Monday, Thursday, as Jesus celebrated the Passover, he led a meal for the disciples and he read Psalm 118 for them or with them. We don't know who wrote this psalm, but we do know who spoke this psalm. And so as we hear these words, we can hear the voice of Jesus as the one who is proclaiming this for us. 
He is the one this verse, this psalm is all about. In fact, verse 26, the last verse we heard, is one that is quoted by all four Gospels on Palm Sunday as Jesus rides into Jerusalem and the crowd shout, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. See, Jesus is the fulfillment of this psalm. And the shouts of joy continue when he is found. But you remember Holy Week. You remember how those shouts of joy on Palm Sunday slowly darkened and became more and more silent as that week progressed because Jesus knew how all nations surrounded him. And so today we do celebrate Easter. Today we celebrate the resurrection. Today we're shouting, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Kind of odd to have Easter, though, without by Wednesday, isn't it? Or Monday, Thursday, or Good Friday. But we know the events of those days. We remember how on Monday, Thursday, Jesus was surrounded by the soldiers in the garden. We remember how on Good Friday, he was surrounded by the crowds at his trial and even surrounded by the criminals on the cross. And then as the day progressed, he was even surrounded by the stones as he, went, as he was placed into the tomb. The people, they mocked him. They beat him. They shouted, crucify him. And as Jesus was surrounded, he continually turned to his Father, the one who promises to be near all who are surrounded. And Jesus cried out to the Father for relief. And yet he still bare, bore the consequences of sin. On that cross, he carried the consequences of the sin of all of creation. He, he carried the consequences of your sin. And as he went to the cross, surrounded by your sin, we hear the psalmist say in verse 18, the Lord has disciplined me severely. He was disciplined for our sin. But today we celebrate Easter. Today we celebrate that Good Friday was not the end of the story. We celebrate that Jesus, the one who was surrounded by all and even the tomb walls, is the same Jesus who is alive, who is now surrounded by the angels and their praises, shouting a blessing and glory and honor to him because death is defeated and the tomb is open and Easter is here. Today is Easter but as we've said before, every Sunday is Easter as we celebrate the resurrection. And even more than that, every day is Easter as we are now people of the resurrection. So this Sunday is a little bit different in that we had a procession at the start of the service. We didn't have announcements, but well, let, let's get into it this way. Uh, let's play a little Pastor Mars's trivia. Uh, this is always a fun game, isn't it? Uh, it, it, real fun. <laughs> uh, let's assume it's late March uh, and it's opening day of the Indians baseball game. Where do you think Pastor Marcus likes to watch opening day? Uh, the home opener. Uh, Jacob's Field. He's not going to watch it from home if he has a chance and prefer to be there. Let's play some other Pastor Marcus trivia. If we say OH, what's he going to say? Yeah, of course. Uh, Pastor Marcus trivia. When he comes out for announcements on Sunday morning, What's the first thing he says? Ah, okay, after good morning. Yes, yes. <laughs> you fooled me on that one. <laughs> yeah, he says good morning, and then what's he say? This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. See, this is more than just a, a cute, pious phrase. This is more than just something to break the ice and get the day started. As Pastor Marcia says this, every single time he goes through announcements, he is declaring that this is Easter. This is the day the Lord has made. That, that day in reference, it's not just talking about any day, which you know, God did make every day, and he helps the sun to rise and provide all that we need every day, but this day is more specific than just any random day. Remember, so far as we've looked at Psalm 118, everything has been pointing us to Holy Week and what Jesus did through Holy Week and ultimately what he did on Easter morning. So this day in reference in verse 24, that's Easter. 
Today is Easter as Jesus is the fulfillment of all that was proclaimed. And we see that even as we get a running start in verse 21. The psalmist says, I thank you that you have answered me and you have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. See, God does the impossible. When all odds are stacked against him, when all hope seems to be lost, God is at work answering prayers and bringing deliverance to Israel at the Red Sea, to Jesus as he bursts through the tomb, and even to us today when we are surrounded and hope is lost. God does the unexpected as he takes that which is rejected and then places it as that cornerstone from which all faith is built upon which we stand now. God is the one at work when we are surrounded. And that's where we find our comfort. When the murder hornets of sin is near, God is at work. When the murderous shouts were directed at Jesus, God is at work. When those shouts are directed at us, or we are even speaking them to ourselves, God is at work redeeming, restoring, and delivering you. The tomb is empty, and so today is Easter. But because the tomb is empty every day, we can declare that every day is an Easter for us. And so when we remember the resurrection... We remember Jesus is at work. And when we remember Jesus is at work, then we can declare with confidence alongside Pastor Marcus, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds together with Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.